Welcome to this week's Entrepreneurial Artist. I'm Chris Mercer and I'm with my lovely co-host Kat Machin. Today hi, we're talking about, hi Kat, today we're talking about planning. Now if you'd said to me probably a few years ago planning I would have thought oh my god it's you know so boring don't want to do it and it's just not my thing but I tell you now that I've been doing it for a few years it's like one of my favorite things and something that just sort of keeps me on track um every day every day so we both work on annual plans don't we Kat that's right and I must add to that is that if I don't do a plan for any particular quarter I feel so lost oh, yeah. in like my business direction and I, I think there's a lot of this, you know, a, a lot of people would think, well, do artists really need to plan? And art is still a valid business and you still need to have a, a, some sort of business plan. It's so essential. Yeah. It's not, you know, you know, as an artist, it's if you still run the business and you still want to get up every morning and go, what am I doing today? You need a plan to mm. to keep you on track. Otherwise, you, you probably all know the feeling of you just get up and you just start wandering about not sure what to do have a dabble here and there but if you've got your plan you you you're always on task yeah and I think more than that as well like so firstly you get that beautiful clarity where you know what you're doing every day but I think also it's that you can start to move your operations everything you do forward towards something far far greater than you could ever have just done by sheer chance yeah. and you can take the sort of chance work out of it and actually work to something that is like a sick like a significant milestone or in the case of a previous episode when we were talking about pulling down your mission this is actually how you get to your mission it's like the roadmap to your mission I guess yeah definitely yeah. So it's really actually really rewarding, isn't it? Because you can see everything that you do every day is like one step further closer to your mission. Mm. We'll start off with an annual plan, which we'll, we'll start. We've got a couple of different ways that we do things. Um, Kat's got a, um, a different way. We'll start with our mission and then reverse engineer the mission. You know, your mission's 10 years. What do you want to achieve this year? And so we start looking at that as your first thing. And I think once you've got, so once you've got that starting point, you've got your way you want to be in a tenure and you've got your sort of figured out roughly what you want to achieve within this first year. So you've just broken it down. You know, they say the way you eat an elephant is one bite at a time. Not that I eat elephants, but um, if you did. the next thing is really, no, not at all. <laughs> The next thing is coming up with these strategic questions, right? And the strategic question is, uh, how do I give them that? So you think about all the different aspects that you need to do. So let's say, for instance, if your 10-year mission is that you want to reach a million people a year with your artwork, or you want to spread the message of whatever it is that you are, you know, is really important to you, um, you break it down. So let's, let's say, for instance, you want to you want to target or or manage to reach, let's say, um, ten thousand this first year. So you create a strategic questions around it. So like, how do I achieve ten thousand? Like, reach like or share my mission with ten thousand people. Given that, and it might be given that I don't have a platform, or given that um, you know I haven't developed my message, or given that you know something. So you just sort of keep on breaking it down and down until. You've got all of these different strategic questions. There'll be many. It'll be like, how do I, you know, maybe your mission or part of your thing you want to achieve is a website that can get garner sales, right? It's like, how do I get a website? Given that I've not got a, um, a, I don't know how to code or given that I have never made one before or whatever it is. And I think once you've got a big list of those strategic questions, because actually the, uh, the, the gold is in those questions mm, yeah and I suppose another example is say like for sales if you want to achieve a hundred thousand dollars in your first year then you can sort of look at that and say well how am I going to achieve a hundred thousand dollars given that I only create four paintings we're not looking at the moment 
of the how you're going to do it. We're looking for the objective and then the obstacle that's in our way. Because the how we do it, we can figure out later on. There's always, the how bit is actually completely easy. It's figuring out what we want. And I would add to that, that sometimes things come up in the course of the year, things will come up. And like, I, I use this example, like I was talking to a friend about their business and they were like, oh, you know, I need to get a business manager. I need to hire a new business manager. And I said, and she was struggling, couldn't get like, couldn't find the right talent to fill that spot. And anyway, it turns out that actually when we looked at it, she was doing all these hours of cleaning and actually she could have just hired a cleaner and that would have given her the time rather than having to hire a whole business manager. So sometimes the uh, very first thing that you come up with is not always the right one. And also things change. Things door, you know, new doors open up all the time. So um, it's just good to know the objective and what the issue, like what the challenge is around it, but not necessarily how you're going to fix it. Like staying off the how is very challenging because you still just naturally want to just write down the answer. Yeah. But I think, um, I think that often, and also I like to think of it like this: your subconscious mind is phenomenal. And I think we've all had this scenario where, you know, we've we've been out and about, we've met someone, and you're sitting thinking in the shower, like, oh God, who is it that I met in the party? I can't remember the name. What was it? What was it? And then like four hours later that day, you sit up and you go, oh, it was, I don't know, it was Emily or it was Stephen or whatever it is. And then you weren't actively thinking that whole time, but you were, your subconscious mind was going over it. Mm. And like, once you've written these like um, strategic questions, what happens is that your brain just keeps on working and it's important to revisit it daily um your brain keeps on working on it and then all of a sudden you just have that you we've all had that flash of inspiration oh I could do ask this person or I could do whatever it is to solve your problem but if you'd have just sat there and wrote and wrote and <laughs> <I'll speak today. laughs> if you just wrote and um don't get English advice from me if you've just written the answer what it does is it closes off your subconscious mind your subconscious mind can't continue processing it You've already come out with this solution, so you're going to stop thinking about it. But that might not be the most elegant solution because sometimes these things take time, even though you, I, I think I'm guilty of this. Is you want to sort of rush the finish line yeah. <laughs> and be like, I want to well, you, have you everything laid out. The answer, you don't you? It's like, yeah. oh, well, I know how to fix that. But staying off the how, you, you'll probably get like multiple answers to it. Mm. Where when you go straight to, oh, I can fix this and that. You don't open yourself up, as you're saying, to lots of different possibilities that might just pop in. They're not yeah. like normal things, are they? And there might be an absolute piece of gold that you missed by doing mm. that. So yeah. write down your strategic questions. And then from those strategic well, I'll tell questions. You what, before we get into oh, that, yeah. I love the way that you said about um, the way you did it with the mapping as well, because that will get you to strategic ah, questions. So that's another way to questions. do it before we get into so, other. Yeah, that's awesome. So I love this video. It's actually one of those videos that changed my life. Um, and it's a, a TED talk. If you've not watched any TED talks, where have you been? <laughs> <laughs> and it's by a lady called Patty Dabrowski. P-A-T-T-Y, and please don't let make me spell Dabrowski <laughs> because it's the letter D. <laughs> uh, anyway, she does this talk called Draw Your Future, and it is like amazing, like so amazing. And what she does is she get you basically like draw literally a crappy sketch, which hopefully everyone here can do. It doesn't matter, it could be a stick figure of where you are right now. All the challenges, the obstacles, how you're feeling, what's your surroundings. What are your opportunities or whatever? And then the same, but where you want to be, your goal, your dream. It doesn't even have to necessarily be realistic. I mean, within the bounds of physics, of course, it can't be like, I want magical superpowers. But, you know, <laughs> if anyone else in the world has already achieved it, then you can write that down on the piece of paper. I like to look at it like that, right? So, and and go a bit wild like the whole point of it, it's got to give you goosebumps you know you don't want to it's not going to be too 
Yeah, it's got to be though. Got to be set your soul on fire. Um, and then what you do, and it's just so magical, is because you have those two visual things in front of you, your brain just naturally starts to connect, you know, and from those two things, what you can do is write down strategic questions or strategic, you know, like, so how do I get this given that I've got X, Y, or Z challenge? And by doing that, it's just when you see them, you the, the issues that you have just suddenly come very it just it, it's amazing how it happens being able to see like I I often think that people's brains must work in stories because being able to see the two imagery you know images really helps you build the story of how you get from A to B and ultimately that is your plan isn't it or at least the startings of yeah yeah and then it's like um from those strategic questions like we've got the obstacle that's in the way then we flip it over to the other side and look at it, what would it be like afterwards? So say like you've, the obstacle is I've got no website and you flip mm -hmm. the card on that. And then to achieve your annual goal, your annual goal may read that you want a, uh, or you now have a sales converting website converts 50 sales a week. So right. we have smart and goals. So SMART goals means they're specific, they're measurable, they're achievable, they're realistic, and they're time-based. So time-based, it's like annual goal. Mm -hmm. Realistic, that you know you can do it. Um, achievable, same thing again. And specific, you're saying exactly, it, so it could be measured at the end of the year that you can go tick, tick, done that. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And I think... Um... I think also when you write it out, like, you know, sort of free, so you don't specifically say, oh, I, keep, I need to specifically hire this person to do this task at this stage is because you might, you might get down the road and realize that the sales converting website that you actually need isn't even yours. It might actually be that you need to sign up to Blue Thumb or uh, Fine Art America or yeah. wherever it is, you know, so it, it gives you the opportunity to like sort of laterally think about these things I love. Um, and I think one thing about writing priorities is that when you start, there are a bloody lot of them. Yes. And that as you work your way through the years of doing this, they get smaller and smaller. My list is actually not massive anymore. And that's, mm -hmm. so at the beginning, I think that you can be quite overwhelmed because you're like, oh God, there's a lot on here but you don't have to work on everything right now. <laughs> I think yeah. it's important well, that's where we have the annual plan. So then you'll, you would have switched all those objections that you had into a plan that you can achieve. So we're still not looking at how we do it. So say, we're, like say, I've given you the website example, say another example might be, um, say you want to produce prints, say, mm -hmm. and it might be, I, produce and sell a hundred prints a month that might be or in, well a month so you do that by 12 so because it'll be your annual goal so it'll be 100 100 1200 uh, prints per year <laughs> would be your annual target so then from your annuals that's when we start breaking it down into quarterlies so then you will start look at looking at Okay, that's what I want to achieve in a year. So the first quarter of that year, what do I want to pull down from that list to start working on? And I don't know mm. about you, Kat, but like from the quarterlies, I pull it down to monthlies before I get to the weeklies as well. That's amazing. I don't do that, but I feel like it's one of those things that I should do. And then having those monthlies is it's it, you know what it's funny because I've actually written on my planning that I need to have monthly planning sessions <laughs> but I haven't done it yet <laughs> yeah. I find it too big I find it too big it to go from you know a quarterly to go well what am I supposed to do today mm. but when I can see it as a monthly so when I've broken it down then into say like September I only have to look at what I want to achieve in September every single week because then we'll mm. break it down into weeklies where we'll have our, our tops. Do you want to talk on So, 
we because I don't know if we've said the top is a tactical operating priority so it's it's the kind of the same as an annual priority but the word tactical means that you're op, you're working on it right now because you're going to have priorities that you're not going to work on right now so and um, the idea of breaking it down so you've got all of your list of annuals then you break it down into what am I working on this quarter they become tops and then what am I working on this month they're still like it's one or two of those tops and like here's the thing you're not meant to be working on a million of them at once like and I think that a lot of artists might fall into this trap and I know I have in the past having I mean I'm like trying to be an overachiever and get eight or nine tops in there and it's just a lot you know mm. um I think also the thing I want to mention right now is that um like it has to be a balance between working on your business because these are all things that are like working on your business versus working in your business mm. so the difference being is um you know if i'm at my canvas or easel painting um i'm working in my business i'm operating or if i'm packing artworks or whatever it's not necessarily moving it's like moving the day-to-day -day ahead but not moving the general direction of the company ahead yeah. But I have to balance that also with working on the business. So, you know, looking at strategies, you know, building marketing things, you know, organizing big projects for the future, doing business deals, all of that kind of stuff is like working on the business or even like, you know, it could even be like sorting out your financials and getting your financial accounting systems. All of that is on your business versus like the actual labor that goes into making the actual pieces, which is in your business. So you need a bit of both. I think one of the worst pieces of advice I've ever had was someone said, oh, you need to stop working in your business. You need to work on your business, which I think is a good luxury if you're not an artist and you're selling your own paintings because you actually have to paint. <laughs> Yeah, that doesn't quite work for us, does it? No, no, it's, it's a bit of a challenge, um, you know, but equally the same could be true. If you're, all you're doing is, is what I call treading water, you're not moving your business forward. What percentage do you reckon you work on the business and then in the business? It changes, I think, from week to week, depending on like what is going on. But generally speaking... It's probably about probably about 50 50 for me right now but it, it it does swing quite wildly some days i i've had months actually where i've done no painting no yeah. artwork because all i'm doing is like project focus um, and then there's some months where i've done absolutely nothing on the business but like on the whole i think it's really turned out to be about 50 50 but I, I have heard other people say 80, 20, like 80 in your business, that, 20 yeah. on your business. Yeah. But, so, but I do agree with you that it changes because of late, I've been doing lots of things on my website. It's been like 95, five, you know, <laughs> right. Yeah. But you know, that will change again next week, but yeah, yeah. I think maybe, you know, 50, 50 or 80, 20, it just seemed to be the, the thing doesn't it yeah and i think because I, it is one of these misconceptions and actually i would say that this is the determining point between whether you are successful in art or whether you are scraping by mm. is how much um is actually putting some allotting some time and giving yourself permission some time to actually work on your business sorting out the nuts and bolts the systems and processes the way that you do your customer service the way that you do your marketing planning and all of that stuff that we'll probably talk about later mm -hmm. um you know and the way that you build your you know all of those things are so essential that if you don't if all you do is sit at your easel and paint then you know it's a challenge because sometimes artwork is just for ourselves and if that's you that's fine but if you really want to make it your living which i think is the best gift honestly because i would rather not have to do a full-time job because that means i can spend more time painting and you i know, think if you watch think... this that's probably something that's on your mind <laughs> yeah i would hope so otherwise so, <laughs> right for sure so i i 
it's worth spending the 80 or the 50% of your time doing the business aspect of your art so that you don't have to necessarily have a full-time job outside of it just to make ends meet because really you have everything within your power to be super successful but you got to do the <laughs> got to do the business side of things that's actually all you know and i mean this is a very cold and impassionate way of saying it but you know you know art businesses are manufacturing jobs you know you're you're a factory producing a product that people want mm. um that's a terrible way to put it there's a lot more emotion and feeling yeah. into it of course I mean, but ultimately like, yeah for sure so know. once that's you've got that, your um you know we're, we're there you know you're saying if you spend all your time painting mm. I don't know you exist yeah, it's so sad, you know, and especially because you've got, I think everyone watching this has got an important mission, an important purpose. And, you know, we all want to, like, um, not everyone, but hopefully everyone really wants to help the world with their artwork. But the only way of doing that is getting it out there, you know. Mm -hmm. So once we've got our tops for the, for the quarter, and then obviously what you do is you break it into your weekly goals. So You've got your strategic questions, break that down into a list of priorities, a section of them, they're your tactical priorities and the ones you're going to work on that month. So they might, that tactical priority might be like build a website, um, but that's too big to put in a week slot. So if, so we break it down to what you're going to achieve in that week. So that we, we call that a goal. So, um, so uh, when you look at your um, tops, do you have a particular method of like breaking it down into what you're working on that particular week? Or is it just you go by a feel? Just by what's most urgent and what would move me forward the most. Oh, yeah, I just I love, love that. There is that, um, there's that uh, diagram which is by someone which I've forgotten their name, but it's like urgent versus oh, yeah. important. Yeah. And I love doing that as a way to prioritize what I'm working on. So yes. the way that I define urgent is if I don't do something, something bad will happen. And the way that I define important is if I do do something, something good will happen. Mm -hmm. Because um, for instance, there are lots of things that are urgent but not important. It's often because it's like somebody else is it's still things you've got to work on. Like for instance, an urgency might be that your child is sick and you need to go and pick them up, but that might not be important for your business per se. So if you don't do that, something bad will happen. Your child is really important. So that's how I would define urgent, urgent and unimportant things. Often I would say it's like, often it's like tasks placed on us by other people. It might be like, you know, um, something someone else needs you to do. And then you've got urgent and important. And those ones I'm like, they're red hot, like get them done. If you don't do them, something bad's going to happen. If you do do them, something good is going to happen. It's great. And then you've got where most of the planning thing comes in, like with long-term vision is things that are important, but not urgent. And I've always had a challenge. Like I love a good deadline me, mm. but you know, sometimes if I, um, Sometimes I like to wait until the last minute, I'll be honest. <laughs> oh, it makes you move, doesn't it? It makes you move. It does. It puts a little fire under you. But there's lots of those like things that aren't urgent. But if you do them, life is going to be so much better in the future. Mm. Those are the ones that I really try to put into my goals mm. sooner rather than later. And then you've got ones that aren't urgent and aren't important. Mm. And often those are things you just get rid of. Mm. Sure. But these are things that you can see, isn't it? As you're doing the plan, you can, as you've broke, yeah. broken it down so much, you can just pick, you know, what's going to make your life easiest to do, to move you forward every week towards that mission. Yeah. So as an example, like your top might be to sell 50 artworks. Mm -hmm. Your goal might be, all right, well, this week I'm going to sign up to this Blue Thumb website, or I'm going to sign up to a different, like, um, you know, it's the Saatchi and Saatchi website, or I'm going to, to, I need to make a website. So I'm going to look at hiring someone that can do it, for instance. And that might be a goal, which is something that's big enough to take a week um, so that you can tick it off. And we usually pick about five of those mm. sort of weekly things. And then once you've got those five, it's then breaking it down into the daily tasks. 
So what are you doing specifically today? So, you know, in that uh, example, you might be like, okay, well, first things first, today, today's task is I'm going to research the three different uh, online sales platforms to see which one's best for me. And then the second go, uh, task for that particular day might be, um, okay, well, I'm going to um, take some professional photographs of my artwork because that's going to be needed to put my artwork online. And then the third one might be that I'm going to just do the base level of the setup. And then the next day you might finish off the setup. You might add your import all your artwork. So it's like strategic questions at the top priorities you break your priorities down and these all connect like you shouldn't just put random priorities in there or random tops or random goals or random tasks you can of course do them because this should only be 50 or even 20 percent of your operations but the idea is that everything is chain linked from your mission yeah. so everything connects mm. um yeah yeah so I don't it's know what cool it's pulled down, isn't it? So, you know, it, by the end of the year, you've ticked off all your annuals because you've been pulling them down the chain, as you said. So you, you're actioning them um, all the time. Okay. If you start to feel overwhelmed with things, that's because you're maybe not chunking them down enough. You're trying to do too mm. much and you just need to break it down a little bit more so it's more manageable. But then you still... No moving forward one of the things i i do so occasionally i get tasks stuck and i was talking to chris earlier about this which is like you know you've got something and it's important and you know you got to do it but you just struggle to bring yourself to do it mm. like i have had some of those things there's loads of different solutions like one of the things i really recommend is what's called a body double which is someone will just sit with you while you do it, it doesn't have to be like doing it they're just you know someone to um, be there that helps you keep focused. But the other thing that I really like is breaking those tasks down to steps. If it's so overwhelming mm. um, that I just can't bring myself to actually get that task done is that I break it into steps and I might just do one or two of those steps. Mm. Um, and often I pick up a momentum so I get the actual task done in the end. Yeah. So how frequently is planning done? Well, we do it annually. We do it annually. We revisit it every quarter. So you've got one annual and you've got three quarters because one of those quarters is an annual. And then you can revisit monthly and check where you're up to. That's not something I do, but that's something that you can do if you want to. And then from those monthlies we break it down into weeks at the beginning of every week on every monday we sit down and we go what are the five uh goals that we want to achieve and we write them down and i think it's important to write it down every single monday consistently yeah. and my team do this as well and i do this with my team and then once that monday morning's a little longer so technically we're there at it every single work day it's just every work day is different so some of those work days you'll be only doing daily. Some of those work days you'll just be doing a weekly. Some of them will be doing a monthly. Some will be a quarter. Some will be an annual, mm. as an example. Yeah. But I think the key is that you're looking at it every day. Yes. There's not a day where you don't look at it. And there's a lot of power to that. And as well, you know, mentioned earlier about the subconscious mind. You're looking at that plan all the time. It is amazing what pops out of the woodwork when you least expect it. A, a rogue thought. Because honestly, I think a lot of us have got challenges, but we're only two steps away mm. from achieving them. Mm. It's just realizing what course of action to take. Yeah. Yeah. And um, that there every day, that's just, you know, keeps you on track, mm. doesn't it? Oh, for sure. For sure. So Chris, what are your top three planning tips? Um, first one would be revisit your mission and to see where to start because that's your, your starting point and then reverse engineer it so you'll know your first year what you want to achieve and then that will kick you off on your plan and you know it's fun planning's fun it's you know this is planning your future in advance so don't take it all seriously and um, get worked up about it I suppose that's my second one. Don't get bogged down and don't get um, overwhelmed with it, really, because 
if you didn't have one before, now you're making something up that you can move you forward and create the life of your dreams. So it's a fun activity. Don't get overwhelmed. Don't take it too seriously. And my third one is be look at it every day. Because we break it down into, um, into our goals for the whole week, we've got that. I, I stick it on my computer and it's, I look at it every day. And if, if there's any point where I go, I don't know where I'm up to, I've got off track. I just pop that up on my screen and think, oh yeah, okay, this is okay. You know, I've done them, done that. I'm onto this one now. So it's not a planning process that you just stick up on the shelf and you, you, you know, you don't bother, you're wasting your time doing it. This is a, a, an active live planning process that you look at every single day to move you forward to where you want to go. How about you, Cass? So it's so funny because we write our top three totally independently. My number one is start from your 10 year mission. <laughs> <laughs> uh, must be right. Snap. <laughs> um, obviously I mentioned it before but it doesn't necessarily you know it should be something that that you know it feel that gives you goosebumps and makes you feel like whoa and it, and you know what your mission should scare you just a little bit and I think that's important um I the second thing uh we, I want to redo my first one because you've already done that so one of the things I would suggest is look, it's a daily occurrence and it makes a lot of difference to be able to do this with another person. So if you are have another artist or another friend that's running a business that wants to do this, like, you know, we there is a lot of power in having some an accountability buddy or even better too, because obviously if there's just one you and one other, if someone's sick, it can't happen. Um but if you and two other people want to do this together and just meet up every day, it should only take 15 minutes, a quick hello. This is what I've done. This is what I'm doing today. That's it. It doesn't have to be long-winded or stories, but it's being in our meeting, like a, a routine, talking about it every day, um, at the beginning, preferably. Um, the second thing is make sure you write it down and look at it daily. Um, I think we've all done that thing where we've written goals down and lost the paper. And then later on, we've been like, oh, I've actually ticked off a bunch. I do it all. I, I used to do it all the time. And occasionally I find them around the house and it's wonderful joy. But that's what happens when you just write it down once. But when you write it down, you look at it consistently. Wow, what a difference that makes. Mm -hmm. um, and number three, and I've said it before, but just understand that you've got to work on the business as well as in the business give and take they've both got to be present in order for you to get absolute success so just be okay that some days you're not going to be painting all the time all the time on some days you are going to be painting all the time just make that balance nicely mm -hmm. and um and you'll have great success so any other comments you want to make chris um just don't get bogged down in the how i suppose you know just mm. repeat that again when you um, writing up what you want your annual goal to achieve don't because it, we can put ourselves off can't we you know, soon you know mm. I can go straight into well how is that going to happen <laughs> and then <laughs> that's it then it's like Whoa. you know so it's like don't get bogged in the how the how can it, it will it, it, ideas will come of how to make that happen yeah 100 percent. make it fun mm. and you know life is very serious anyway mm. <laughs> so yeah well thanks for that chris well if you are listening what is your tenure mission we'd love to know and how are you going to break that down have you got any priorities let us know in the comments if you have any suggestions for future episodes make sure you let us know don't forget us don't forget us <laughs> don't forget to follow us <laughs> <laughs> uh, follow us on all the different socials we have put links in the description next week we're going to talk about building an audience thanks for listening and i'll see you next time Bye. thanks cats.